Are you an international medical graduate or DO school graduate from the US? And do you want to apply to Canadian residency programs? Then you must complete the National Assessment Collaboration Objective Structured Clinical Examination, or the NAC OSCE. While OSCE exams are challenging and stressful to prepare for, we're here to provide you with a comprehensive guide that will outline the NAC OSCE stations, exam expectations, and most importantly, fail-proof prep strategies. Hi, my name is Joseph Kafka, and I'm an admissions associate here at BMO. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe on whatever social media channel you're watching this from so you don't miss out on any of our upcoming videos. And if you would like us to help you prep for your OSCE, click on the link either above or below this video to schedule your free initial consultation. And as a quick tip, check out the timestamps in the description of this video to navigate to specific sections of the video that you're interested in. Here's everything we're going to cover about the NAC OSCE. What is the NAC? Eligibility and application process. What to expect on the exam day. What to expect in the OSCE stations. How is the NAC OSCE scored? Do's and don'ts of the NAC OSCE. And how to prepare for the NAC OSCE. Now, let's get started. The NAC stands for the National Assessment Collaboration Examination. It is a one-day examination for international medical graduates and DO school graduates from the US applying to Canadian residency programs. It has reduced redundancy and duplication of previous international medical graduate assessments conducted by different programs across Canadian provinces and has standardized the results for all residency program directors. The exam is held in multiple cities across Canada and offered in English and French. The option for a French sitting is limited to Montreal though. The purpose of the NAC OSCE examination is to assess the knowledge, skills, and attitudes that are required for entering a postgraduate training program in Canada. The NAC is required for IMGs and DO school graduates from the US applying to Canadian residency programs. If this is your situation, your NAC result must be submitted when you apply to Canadian residencies through CARMS. To apply to the NAC, use the physiciansapply.ca portal. When you register for the NAC on physiciansapply.ca, you are asked to choose three exam centers in your order of preference. You can choose to select only one or two cities. However, this does not increase the likelihood of writing the NAC at your top location. The examination is held twice a year in March and September. If you fail your first attempt, you cannot attempt taking the exam in a consecutive time slot. For example, if you take the NAC in March of a certain year and fail, you are not eligible to retake the exam until March of the following year. You are only allowed to write the NAC three times irrespective of the outcome. Once you complete the NAC, the result is valid indefinitely. And keep in mind that only the most recent result is valid. Your result is legitimate across Canada, and for this reason, you do not need to write the NAC in the province where you aim to apply for residency. All program directors will accept the result regardless of the location where you completed the exam. And just like Canadian graduates, international medical graduates also have to write the Licentiate of the Medical Council of Canada, LMCC, as a component of their CARMS application. The LMCC serves as your official proof of registration in the Canadian Medical Register. The LMCC proofs your academic aptitude and the NAC demonstrates your practical competencies. The NAC is not required to obtain the LMCC, but both are required for your CARMS application. It's also important to note that just because you pass the NAC does not mean you will secure a residency training position in Canada. There are many components that go into securing a residency training position, including the applicant's residency, CV, reference letters, residency personal statement, and acing residency interview questions. On the day of the exam, you will register at the front desk. At this time, you will have to identify all the items you brought with you, and these will be inspected. If you are concerned about privacy, you can ask to have the items examined in a private setting. Note that you can bring a small, nut-free and fragrance-free snack in a Ziploc bag and a clear bottle of water into the secure area. You must bring a white coat without any university logos, a printed entrance card, and a printed and completed copy of the candidate confidentiality agreements from the physiciansapply.ca website. There's a list of items that can be brought to the secure area on the official website, including lip balm, eyeglasses, face mask, and medications. See our blog for a complete list of items that are permitted. If you are more than 15 minutes late for registration, you may be denied entry. 
Once you start the exam, this attempt will count towards the overall number of tries you have to complete the knack. Remember, there's only three. So this means that even if you do not finish, you will have used one attempt of your three attempts. Orientation for the NAC will be provided online. The link is sent to your physiciansapply.ca account. Once the exam starts, you are not allowed to talk to other applicants who are completing the exam alongside you. No watches or phones are allowed. If the examiners find a phone on you, your exam may be canceled and the result may be invalidated. There is also the possibility that you will be unable to retake the exam and may be barred from the MCC, so follow the rules. You'll be given a candidate identification number that you'll read aloud at the start of each station. At registration, you'll be given an identification badge that also identifies which station you'll start your exam. You'll be provided with one notebook to take notes in during the stations. This notebook will be turned in once you finish the exam. The NAC OSCE is comprised of 10 stations, each 11 minutes in length with two minute breaks between stations to prepare for the next station. A short description will be present on the station's doors and inside each station outlining the assigned task, such as taking a history or conducting or describing a physical exam. You will have two minutes to read the prompt on the door and prepare before you enter the station. A buzzer will signal when you can enter the station. When the station begins, you will enter the room where a physician examiner or PE and a standardized patient or SP will be present. You do not need to pay attention to the physician examiner when you enter the room. Focus all your energy and attention on the standardized patient whom you will have to examine based on the prompt you read outside the room. You will have 11 minutes to complete each OSCE station. If you finish early, you'll wait quietly for the station to finish. However, it is allowable to re-engage with the SP at any time if you think of something else you want to say or do. In some stations, you might be questioned by the examiner, which you'll be notified of in the station prompt. A buzzer will signal the time to indicate the transition to examiner questions while you are in the station. Once the physician examiner starts questioning you, you cannot re-engage with the patient even if there's time remaining. As the purpose of the NAC OSCE is to assess your global aptitude and preparation for medical residency in Canada, the scenarios you may encounter at the station span the spectrum of medical practice. The scenarios come from medicine, pediatrics, surgery, psychiatry, obstetrics, and gynecology, and preventative medicine and health. There are many tasks that may be asked in the prompt for you to complete during the station. You may be asked to complete more than one of the following. Take a history. Describe a focused physical exam. Manage or resolve a patient problem. Counsel a patient or a family member. Answer oral questions. Summarize and present findings. Read or reference materials that relate to a patient, including their chart, test results, or medication lists. Interact with physicians or allied health members. The physician examiner is focused on assessing the qualities and attributes necessary to be a successful resident in a Canadian residency program. In order to best gauge these attributes, the examiner is assessing the questions asked of the SP, the physical exam maneuvers used, the organization, and the underlying medical knowledge. You are rated on seven competencies. Quality of history taking, diagnosis, management, communication skills, physical examination, investigations, and data interpretation. For more details and a breakdown of each of these seven competencies, check out our blog. The physician examiner scores the station by observing your interaction with the standardized patient. These scores are standardized as the station includes a checklist and an answer key for the questions to minimize the variation between examiners. Although some stations may seem easier than others, all stations are worth the same in their final score. You are given a final score of fail, pass, or pass with superior performance based on a preset cut score approved by the NAC examination committee. The cut score is not published and you will not get your total score. Now here are some do's and don'ts of the NAC OSCE. Let's start with some do's. Read and follow the instructions. The station instructions are the key to organizing your time. The instructions will provide a framework for what is expected of you. In stations that require a focused interview and physical examination, it will be important to be attentive to the pertinent positives and negatives provided in the prompt and throughout the interview to organize your questions to finish on time. If the prompt states conduct a history, you will not get credit for performing a physical examination. So pay attention to the instructions and do exactly what is being asked of you. Use your notebook. It is easy to forget some key features provided in the prompt. Use your notebook to highlight pertinent positive and negative features in addition to the requirements of the session. 
This is key when you move from station to station, as it can be easy to confuse stations, which can significantly affect your overall performance. When completing a physical examination, it is crucial to verbalize what you are doing. Depending on the angle, the interviewer may not be able to identify the landmarks you are using or the location at which you are palpating. This is why saying every action you perform is crucial to your success in the stations. In addition, it demonstrates anatomical knowledge and provides the examiner with insight into your thought process. The examiner will provide findings after you verbalize the steps of your physical examination. It is not crucial to explain why you are doing a certain examination. However, you must state it and provide appropriate terminology and organization, both of which are rated on your overall station performance. Take it one station at a time. Each station will require you to forget the previous station. Additionally, don't anticipate upcoming stations. This will allow you to be truly present in the station and attend to the history provided by the patient you are currently working with. Use active listening to attend to the standardized patient as they have key information that will guide your differential and management. The aim of counseling stations is to demonstrate your various competencies in medicine including leadership, management, and most importantly, communication. When you are asked to counsel or advise a patient related to a problem, disease process, or medication, it is important to provide specific information tailored to the patient. Do not provide generic information. Nerves can surface in many ways, including quickened speech, increased hand gestures, and stuttering. At times, it may be difficult to maintain eye contact and rely on your standard approach to questions. This kind of behavior can come across as judgmental and may not cater to the responses provided by the standardized patient. When conducting a history, sit outside the patient's personal space with open body language, including shoulders squared, feet flat on the ground, and at the same level as the patient. Avoid crossing your arms or legs as it can come across as closed. Take pauses to collect your thoughts and use nonverbal communication, including nodding, and simple statements to demonstrate to the patient that you are listening. During your NAC OSCE, here are some important don'ts. Do not ignore the patient. The standardized patient is the focus of the examination. Oftentimes, standardized patients feel as though the candidates have an agenda and are not truly listening to them. If the SP's story does not make sense, use probing questions to continue exploring the issue. If the patient states it is worse or this is different, probe into what they mean. Be inquisitive to discern what they mean by worse. Such statements may indicate that the patient has had a similar problem before. Standardized patients are asked to act like real patients. However, if you are able to demonstrate empathy, active listening, and collaboration, the patient will be more likely to share embarrassing or fearful information. Your interaction with the patient is key in your overall performance in the examination. While it is true that the examiner has a checklist and an answer key, the standardized patient is the focus in acquiring the information needed to come up with a differential diagnosis to shape your approach to investigation and management. When you are nervous, it can be easier to begin the station with a lot of questions as if you are interrogating the patient. This can affect the history the patient is able to supply, especially if you dominate the conversation. In addition, the OSCE is not the place to show off your theoretical knowledge. Avoid jargon and medical terminology as it can make the patient uncomfortable and embarrassed. When counseling on your management plan, explain the disease process in simple language and provide single step instructions. Provide multiple opportunities for patient questions. This simulates successful clinical encounters and best demonstrates the qualities the PE is assessing in the station. Studying for an all encompassing examination can be daunting and overwhelming. It is important to organize the material into manageable chunks of information to best attend to all the necessary content in a timely and focused manner. As there is a lot of information to cover, it is important to identify key diagnoses. It can be helpful to keep a patient log with the diagnosis or to review organ systems and highlight key diagnoses. Once you have a list of diagnoses, use your time to highlight pertinent history and physical exam findings that contribute to the diagnosis. Ensure that you follow up with key investigations and management to have an answer key to review. Setting study priorities for this examination can at times be difficult, especially when the exam is scheduled ahead of time. Many applicants are studying for both the LMCC and NAC examinations simultaneously or consecutively, and this can lead to burnout. So starting early can allow you the time to study in small increments and avoid cramming. Studying with others allows you to remain on track 
collaborate on learning objectives, and maximize your retention. At times, studying for the NAC OSCE can feel overwhelming. Busy study schedules do not allow for time to focus on other aspects of our lives and our well-being. Try to take a day a week to disengage from your NAC studying and reward yourself for your hard work. This can provide some relief and allow you to re-energize for another week of studying. The best way to learn is through practice. Develop realistic scenarios and pose the scenarios to your group members. Practicing with new scenarios will replicate the OSCE, allow you to identify your strengths and limitations and provide opportunities for feedback. Here's another great tip. In addition to practicing in groups, take the opportunities you have in clinical situations to get feedback from residents and staff. Implement their feedback into your OSCE practice sessions. It can also be helpful to keep a record of scenarios that you've completed and indicate whether or not you feel prepared for such scenarios. As you approach the examination, this log can provide insight into the areas you should focus on towards the end of your preparation period. OSCE exams are tremendously challenging. Even study groups cannot always provide all the necessary help you need in preparation for this test. A medical school advisor, on the other hand, can provide you with a clear, objective assessment of how well or poorly you are performing in different scenarios and stations. Getting personalized feedback will not only improve your professional knowledge, but will also allow you to work on your communication skills and positive presentation. This wraps up our video for today. Check out our blog to learn more about the NAC OSCE, including frequently asked questions and other resources. I've included a link in the description of this video so you can find the blog easily. If you would like us to help you prepare for your NAC OSCE, click on the link either above or below this video to schedule your free initial consultation. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, so please subscribe, like, and leave a comment. Speaking of comments, if you have any questions about the NAC OSCE I didn't cover in this video, let me know in the comments section and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.